This is my response video to Navy Thomas 8. He did a video talking about travel to the stars and how long it would take. So first we would probably want to pick a class G star like our own sun since that's what we would probably be most compatible with as human beings. It would be the best choice for us. Alpha Centauri has a class G star. It's a three star system and it's 4.2 light years from us. Tau Ceti is 12 light years from us and it's a three star system. I would say first let's do the calculations for Alpha Centauri to see how we're going to do with that as far as getting to that since uh, Tau Ceti is three times as far away and see if within a human lifespan we can actually reach Alpha Centauri. I'm going to be using paper and a calculator to assist myself because I may be pretty good at math but I'm not a math genius. Now the best spacecraft we have right now can travel around 30,000 miles per hour. You're probably going to get interrupted by some cats sneaking in here to be petted, but oh well. So that would mean a craft nowadays could make the trip to the moon in approximately eight hours. The moon's 250,000 miles away. So you take that, multiply that times three, and that means a spacecraft that we can build nowadays can actually travel 750,000 miles in 24 hours, which would be a day. So. We know Alpha Centauri is 4.2 light years away, so we have to calculate how far that is in miles, since we know we can travel 750,000 miles in a day. One light year is 5.8 trillion miles. Let's call it 6 trillion just to make it nice round numbers. That would be a 6 with 12 zeros after it. Yeah, 12 zeros after it. So let's say 6 trillion miles as a nice round figure times 4.2 light years away would give you 6 times 4 is 24 plus 6 times 0.2 would be 1.2 that would be 25.2 trillion miles so that would be a 25 with 12 zeros behind it 25 trillion miles so I'm going to write that down 25 trillion 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 zeros now we have to figure out We've already figured out that we travel 750,000 miles in one day, and we divide that figure into 25 trillion miles. And on the calculator, we get 33,600,000 miles total. So that's, or no, we get, sorry, 33,600,000 days. It's 33,600,000 days of travel. Now, how many years would that be? We divide that by 365, and we get 92,054 years. That's quite a trip, 92,054 years. So even if we could go 10 times that speed, even if, say, in the next 20 years we could get up to where we could go 300,000 miles per hour, we're still talking about 9,205 years. So that's not really that great doesn't look very likely like we would make any kind of trip to Towson, uh, Tau Ceti or anything like that anytime soon. Plus the fact that Tau Ceti, even though it has a G-class star, it's a younger solar system and has about ten times the dust disk around it that our solar system has, so it's a younger solar system. And so there are some technologies right now being tested that can get us up to about 10% of the speed of light. It's, it's still in the theoretical and not really that practical, but we have solar sails, we have nuclear propulsion, we also have, uh, what's it called, ion drive. We have ion drive. It's a, a slow form, but it gets you up to speed and it keeps accelerating. Any of those technologies, they're saying 20 years in the future, that could get us up to 10% of light speed. Of course, I kind of think maybe 10 years from now they may still be saying that's 20 years in the future. That's just the way those things kind of work. So. Um, here's some of my big concerns about it though, the engineering stuff aside, if we could make, if I could wave a magic wand and we could make a propulsion system that could go half the speed of light and say get us to Alpha Centauri in like eight, nine years, suppose you could do that with like a, a spacecraft the size of a single or a double wide trailer and uh, would you really want to be on that small of a size of craft for eight to nine years with other people? You would likely be sharing it with other people because I doubt you would want to make the trip by yourself. You'd want at least a doctor, an engineer, a pilot, and a co-pilot besides you. And probably even as a backup, you would want a medical tech 
that was also an engineer too. And then what would your job be? Well, probably if you're traveling for 10 years, you wouldn't want to eat space glot protein for 10 years, even if you could pack enough of it on board. So probably what you would end up doing is you would be the plant guy. You'd be the, um, the guy running the mini farm. And uh, probably because of that, half the double wide would be taken up just by space for the mini farms so that you could actually eat some decent food and not go crazy eating space glop. So these are just some of my concerns. Um, I hope these calculations maybe help you out to see what the distance actually is and how tremendous it is. So here is my answer for Navy Thomas.